What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from retail. Alright, this story's called, He liked his stolen watch so much, he came back to buy one. I used to work as an assistant store manager at a retailer of primarily watches and leather goods. At the particular location where I worked, we had three points of entry and never much staff working, two to five depending on the time of day and the day of the week. The floor plan was set up so that even if you were trying really hard while also not helping any customers, you could barely see two entrances at once. Additionally, we only kept about 20% of our display product under glass, had no security guard, and our watches were all in the $500 to $2,000 range. It was a loss prevention nightmare, and uniformed officers and detectives got pretty used to visiting at least monthly, if not weekly during busy shopping seasons to take down theft reports and to follow up on them. It was stressful, tedious, and probably the worst part of the job. One busy summer weekend day, when I was the only manager on duty, we noticed two watches were missing from their displays, so I had to step off the floor to review our security camera footage. We had something like 10 different cameras, and throughout my tenure at this retailer, I had gotten extremely proficient at snipping footage and capturing stills from our security cameras to provide to our loss prevention team and the police department. So while reviewing the footage, I found some great angles of the culprit concealing watches, and a pretty good shot of his face from when he entered the store. Needless to say, I knew what the guy looked like. We informed the other retail location in our area that we had been hit, only to find out that the guy had gone straight there and in the short amount of time it took us to figure out that the watches were missing and review the footage, he had already returned one of the watches for store credit. Bold. Cut to about a month later, I'm the only manager working again, and guess who enters the store? The shoplifter. He has returned to the scene of the crime, and guess what? He's brought his fiance, and guess what else? He's wearing the watch he stole and wants to use his store credit to buy another watch as a gift for his business associate. Knowing that the best deterrent to shoplifting is excellent customer service, this is something I learned in luxury retail that has worked pretty well in my experience, since you can keep an eye on things while also not being the jerk whose behavior is blatantly accusatory. I start helping the guy as he and his fiance shopped, while also whispering to all my associates that we needed to watch him because he had stolen from us before. He shops with us for about an hour, playing up how excited he is about his watch and about getting one for his associate. But folks, he had no clue who he he was up against. Five years of improv training anyone? On the sales floor, I'm all smiles, trying on watches with him and his fiance, but in the couple of moments I get to walk away and hand them off to my associate, I'm able to sneak off into the office to call the police and to confirm from my footage that this is 100% our guy. By the end of the interaction, I'm in the cash wrap with my associate who is gift wrapping the new watch, and our our thief kind of corners us to see what we're up to. We can feel him getting progressively more antsy, which is reasonable, since we're taking our sweet time finishing the transaction as we await the cops. We assure him our system is just slow, and he sees my associate clearly trying to perfect the gift's bow. After we finished the transaction and handed him his ill-gotten wares, we watch as he hurries his comfortably seated fiance out of her chair so they can get the hell out of Dodge. They exit and we can see him through our window fumbling with his phone to reactivate the app-based rideshare moped they were using to travel. As he's doing this, the cops cruise by and stop just a few car lengths ahead. They get out of their car and as they approach our door, I look at them with eyes wide frantically pointing at our thief. They go and arrest the guy literally just as he's sitting down on the moped with his 
fiance, who is visibly baffled by this development. After all was said and done, the detectives come and commend me on doing their job for them. Shoplifting arrests after the fact rarely happen, so they were pleased to close a case. And I end up looking the guy up, because he gave his real name for the transaction, and I find out he's some kind of jet-setting yoga instructor. I did see his yoga instructor bio, who travels the world, and literally has Instagram posts of him wearing his stolen watch. Clearly, the guy could have afforded it, but got some kind of thrill from shoplifting and returning to the scene of the crime. As for the fiancé, while I have sympathy for her, it's probably better she found out about his kleptomania before saying I do. Anyway, I left that job a few weeks later to work at another company, where I'm happy to report that I haven't had to file a single police report for the entire year I've been there. Wow, that's quite the, that's quite the feat, man. Um, well, uh, that guy's kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, he got caught shoplifting. That's embarrassing in any criminal's eyes, I feel like. Alright, this story's called, A Disorganized Supplier Can't Do Things Right. So, where I worked, we would often order a good chunk of our plumbing supplies through a certain supplier. And each time I've dealt with this company, it's been nothing but headaches and just stupidity on their end, which I will tell about. The first time I dealt with them, my manager placed an order with them and I had to receive it when it came in. However, when the order arrived, I didn't get any information from them on how much they were charging us for the parts, so I had no idea what I needed to charge for retail. So I contact the company to go through their auto system, going through the prompts until I get to their accounting department. I tell them what's going on, saying I need the cost of our order. They tell me they can't do that, I have to speak with their sales and orders department, and they give me the phone number. I call up sales, give them the same story. They tell me they don't do that, that I have to get the pricing from accounting. I was confused and told them accounting told me to get it from you. They told me they don't do that and give me the number to contact accounting directly without the auto prompts. So I contact accounting, tell them I talked to sales, said they told me to get it through you. Accounting told me they don't deal with that at all. It's sales that handles that. To summarize the next little bit, I phone back and forth maybe three to five times, getting the same response from each department. I forget which department was on, but the person on the other end said to me, I can't understand why they can't just give you the invoice. I was getting rather aggravated and told the person on the phone, that's what the other department is saying about you guys. So the person says they'll look after it. They contact the person needed and ask for my email so it can be sent to me. I was glad I was finally getting somewhere, so I end the call. And wait, a day goes by. Still no email. Fed up, I talk to my boss, asking if he has any contacts in his company, because I still haven't gotten any invoice. He tells me he'll contact his representative and get me one. Less than an hour later, my boss hands me the invoice. Now here's the kicker. I think close to five months pass, and I suddenly see an email from the supplier. And lo and behold, it's the invoice for the order. This is just a foreshadowing of what this company is like. There is still more to this story. So maybe about two years ago, my boss wanted me to set up another order with the company. I get the order sheet the company provided and make up an order and send it through. Not long after, I get the confirmation email with them asking me to look through the order and make sure everything is looking good in case changes needed to be made. I look through it and notice I made a few mistakes I needed to change. So I phone the name that was attached to the email confirmation and explain to the person that there are mistakes and just need to make a few changes. The person responds with, well, the order is finalized, so it can't be changed. I was flabbergasted. I said I never gave the final approval like the email specified. I can't remember the exact wording she used, but it was along the lines of, it's been sent to their warehouse for the workers to pick up and changing it would be tricky with their 
computers. To me, sounded like they could do it, but they just didn't want to be bothered by it. Angry, I asked them if the order can be cancelled. She told me it can be cancelled, so I told her, cancel it, I'll redo the order and send it back to you. So she tells me she cancelled the order and I redo it and send it in again later that day. A week later, the order arrives and everything seems to be good, but a week later, another order arrives. After a while of looking through the items, I realized the second order was the order I had originally cancelled. I call the company steaming mad but kept my cool as I explained to them what happened. There was some small confusion on their end because I used the same purchase order for my store for both orders, so I had to read them the different invoice numbers and tell them which one was the one that was cancelled. The person on the phone says, Okay, it doesn't look like you were charged for it. We'll give you our shipping account number and you can just send it back. So I seal the box, put a shipping label on it, and the next day it's on its way back to the supplier. It gets worse. So a few weeks later, the person at my store who handles the accounting called me to her office and says she has two invoices from the company with the same purchase order number on it. When I looked, I saw the supplier did indeed charge us for the cancelled order, which was over $1,500. I told her to hold on to it for now and that I'll call the company. So I call again, feeling like I'm about to snap. I go through the same process on the phone where I explain to them what happened with them being confused with the two different invoice numbers. Finally, they get what's going on, tell me they'll submit the refund, but it will take six months for it to be processed. I told them that was completely unacceptable, that my company shouldn't be out $1,500 for six months because of a screw-up that happened on their end. They told me their accounts are swamped with issuing refunds, so that is the reason for the time. I roll my eyes, thinking, gee, I wonder why. So we wait six months. Still no refund. I call them again. They tell me the refund has been processed and are just waiting for it to be signed off by the head of the department, and that we should see it soon. Not long after, I had to leave a few weeks because of surgery. When I come back, the accounting worker told me she still hasn't received any refund. So I call them again and get the same answer from them, that it just needs to be signed off. I tell them to hurry it up because we are out of a lot of money and they assured me they'll get it to me soon. So I tell my accounting worker what went on and she told me she'll keep an eye out. Months go by. Still nothing. I phone every few months giving them hell and with them apologizing saying they'll get it out right away. Probably before Christmas. We still haven't gotten the refund and we are going on over a year since the original order. I contact the company again, doing my best to stay calm, because I know how it feels to get yelled at for something that doesn't involve you. The woman I speak to on the phone was really good. She was just as shocked and mortified about how long we've been waiting to get a simple refund back. She tells me she'll contact their rep for our company, and he'll call soon to get this resolved. Guess what? Never got any call. I've since been transferred to another store, so I don't know if the money ever made it to us. But I told my boss at one point that we should look into other suppliers, because this one can't seem to do anything right. Jeez, that's, that's a ridiculous amount of time to wait for $1,500. Oh my gosh, how are they still in business? That is ridiculous. Alright, this story's called, Give Me My Cigarettes! This tale unfolded last summer, in the before times. When I was first hired at the gas station for graveyard shift, I was told to always keep the regular door locked and to only do business through the night teller window. One reason was the high number of homeless people who will do snatch and grabs of bags of chips. Chips are what's closest to the door, not to mention the homeless who are high who will just try to eat something in the store without paying for it. I once saw a guy steal a burrito and when I called him out, he tried to take a bite out of it without even removing the plastic wrapper. So one night, I'm safely locked in and this street guy with a dirty handful of dollar bills comes to the window and says he wants to buy a pack of cigarettes. Wonderful. I ring the brand he requests and with the exorbitant taxes on tobacco products in my state, it comes to $10 
and change. Well, of course he doesn't have that. Instead, he shoves his money into the sliding slot and says that will cover the cost. Gingerly counting it, it comes to around $7, and I inform my customer that the price is more than that. He insists that's correct. No, sir, it's 10 something, and pushed his money back to him. Befuddled, he wandered around the gas station pumps and parking areas, picking up random bits of change to supplement his income. Coming back to the window, he deposited the original dirty bills, some old coins, and a pitifully discarded scratcher ticket. I can't take this, sir, I said, sliding back the ticket. Company policy is, we don't do lotto or scratcher things on night shift. So he wasn't going to get any money from that, even if it was a winner. Well, he wanted to buy cigarettes and damn the company policy and damn the tobacco taxes. He spent the next 15 minutes telling me to ring up brand after brand, which were all too expensive for him, and telling me to take the money because the sign posted the pre-tax price, not the final register price. In fact, realizing that he was so poor that he couldn't afford a clue, I tried to tell him to get out of the way of the window so that I could serve real paying companies customers. Not in those words, of course. Of course, no matter how nicely I said it, this just pissed him off. And of course, him being pissed off scared away the gasoline customers who had been waiting in line behind him for a possible break in the insanity to buy gas, which in turn pissed me off because now this vagrant was costing me my business. Okay, no more Miss Nice Gal. And I sternly said, I can't sell you anything. Thing. Just get out of here! Give me my cigarettes! He wittily retorted. No, just go! I said as I appealed to Logic. You want me to call the cops? With that, I picked up the phone and dialed the non-emergency number to the police department. He could hear me giving his description to the dispatcher, and that made him scuttle off the property. But five minutes later, he was back and pounding on the bulletproof glass. Give me my cigarettes! A cruiser came, code 2, and took him away for trespassing because, yes, he was high and in possession of drugs. Stupid, why didn't he just give the drugs in exchange for cigarettes? Man, those are usually worth more. God, dummy dummy head. He had the solution to his problems, yet he still had to beg. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.